All right, welcome back. So far we have one Webpack config that we're using every time we build. And that works great, but often we wanna have some different functionality for development versus production. But at the same time, there's a lot of stuff that is in common between the two. So in this video, we're going to actually have three config files. One that is in common that's shared between dev and production, and then one for dev and one for production. So we can add things in like a development server, a live updating server that we can just run. Instead of building the whole disk directory and having to manually open it, we can use a Webpack dev server. On the other end of things with production, we might wanna minify, we might wanna export our CSS into a separate file. So we're gonna basically set up the, the framework for us to do that in this video. Just to show you what we're aiming for, this is that React app I showed you very early on. If I run npm start, it's not actually building a new directory. It's not uh, making a dist or a build directory. Instead, it's opening up a live server. You can see localhost 3000, my app is working. And if I change something, it updates automatically. Now, if we go back and I instead run npm run build, this is going to use uh, production mode for Webpack. And you'll see that we don't get a live server. It takes longer. Things are being optimized and minimized. Uh, and we end up with an exported directory. It's not exported, but we end up with a new directory called build once it finishes. So if I do an LS, you can see now there is a directory called build, CD build, and there's a couple of files, no live server, but things are compressed, they're minified, and they're ready for production. So we're gonna go for the same sort of idea. We're gonna have npm start, start up a dev server in our little mini app, and then npm run build will actually run it in production and create the dist directory. But first we are going to make a couple of config files. So we have web, webpack.config. I'm gonna make another file called webpack.dev.js and one more, which will be webpack. Let's do prod, prod.js. And I'm gonna begin by just copying what we already have into both of them and then we can selectively delete things. So for example, in production, we want mode to be production. And entry point we can get rid of because we'll keep that in the common one, which I'll rename this to be common, webpack.common.js. These names are up to us. We're going to pass them in when we actually run webpack from our package.json script. So webpack.common, um, I'm gonna keep entry point, I'm gonna get rid of mode, I'm gonna get rid of output because in my dev version, I don't want the content hash. In my production version, I do. It's easier in dev to just not deal with the hashing, just have you know main.js. It's not a big deal, but we can at least set up some differences so you can see it's working. So we can get rid of entry, but we'll do main.js. Over here, we'll do main.contenthash.js in production. Uh, what else? We can get rid of the plugins for now from dev and from prod, those will be the same, but we'll keep it in common. We can keep the SCSS loading. Eventually we'll be minifying our SAS and our CSS in production and not in development. So this will leave the common file, but for now it can stay here. So this is the stuff that we have in common between the two. And then in dev, I'm gonna get rid of all of these rules here and just keep it like this, mode development, production, same thing. So we'll be updating this as we go. But right now this isn't going to work. Well, it could work, but we're not going to merge them with common. So if I want dev to also include the functionality from common and I want production to include the same functionality from common, I'm going to use a package called webpack merge. So npm install dash dash save dev webpack dash merge. And this allows us to very easily merge webpack config together. So that finished, and I'm gonna start by exporting, actually I don't need to do that, it's already module.exports from webpack.common.js. Now I'm going to require it here, so we'll call it common equals require, and then the path is dot slash webpack.common. So that gives us the, the contents of this file of common, and then I'm going to import merge, const merge equals require, webpack merge, we just installed that. Webpack merge right there. Now what I can do is set module.exports to be the function call of merge where I pass common in 
and then this object. And I need to make sure I add my closing paren down there. And what this will do is say merge whatever is in common, which is this, with what we have here in this object. Okay, and then I'm gonna just duplicate this same thing. Uh, we don't need HTML Webpack plugin in this file. We're not using it. We're using it in the common file. So I'm gonna go to production, delete that. And then I'm just gonna copy the same line here, right here, and then add my paren at the end. All right, so all we're doing is changing mode and the output dev versus production. Looks good, save both files. Now we need to tell Webpack which ones to use. So in package.json, when we run npm start, we're gonna make config webpack.dev.js. And then when we run build, we'll set it to be webpack dash dash config webpack.prod.js. And keep our fingers crossed, let's see if it works. So let's start with, um, let's do dev first. So npm start, npm start. Moment of truth, it looks like it worked. Let's look at our index, uh, the new index HTML. You can see that the script is just main.js. It's not main dot blah, 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 ABC, F, 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 something like that, dot JS. And if we look at the script, uh, it's main.js, it is not minified because we set mode to development. Now, instead, if I run npm, run build. So not just npm build, but npm run build. That's going to call webpack with our production file with this config file. And let's look at our index. You can see we now have the content hash. And if we look at the right file, 179D uh, right there, it is minified. Okay, so this is just the beginning of setting up development versus production. I mean, we have it set up, but there's a lot more that we can do to differentiate the two. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set up a dev server, a Webpack dev server, so that when I'm in development, I don't have to keep building like this. I don't have to do npm start every time I wanna see something. And it's really easy to do. npm install dash dash save dev Webpack dev server. And this is actually not something we really have to add into our config file. Instead, we're gonna go back to our package.json, which is, where are you? Oh, I guess I closed it down or I'm blind. Okay, here it is. Instead of webpack, we're going to run webpack dev server. And then at the end, we can optionally pass in dash dash open. It doesn't have to be at the end, but somewhere, a flag. And what this will do is open up the window in our browser for us. So let's see if it works. When I run npm start, we should now end up with the dev server opening it. There we go. It opened up automatically for me. I'm getting all my code here. And if I go and make a change, let's say I change the color in my SAS file. Instead of uh, teal, let's go to magenta and save. You'll see it automatically rebuilds and my browser refreshes, it updates. And you can see that happen over here. Uh, well, it's gonna be kind of annoying to point out, but you can see it rebuilt again and that certain things change to detect them. Essentially, you'll see a bunch of scrolling text <laughs> if you change something. The other thing I wanna make clear about this, uh, if I actually remove the dist folder, so rm-rf dist, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to delete it. Now, if I run npm start, which is using the dev server, here we go, we see our code. Let's tweak it back again one more time. Let's go back to teal, save. It updates automatically. We'll close out with control C. If I do ls, if I do ls, if I use ls, there is no dist folder. So it actually does everything in memory. It, it doesn't actually make a folder for you when you run it with Webpack dev server, which is nice. We don't have to keep you know deleting these files or making these files and overwriting them. It's all in memory. But then if I want to spit it out, npm run build, this will give me my production version where I can now you know, open it up manually or start, I'm gonna put it on a server somewhere and you know, use this as an application. So now I would need to open dist slash index. And it's working, well, aside from the image, which we haven't addressed yet, but our JavaScript is here and yeah, everything looks good. All right, so that's the end of this video. I'm going to commit right now if you're following along. Um, I'm adding a bunch of detailed notes to the commits, by the way. So if you ever get lost, you're not sure which one I'm using. There's the main commit message and then some bullet points below that explains you know, what we did. 
All right, so I'm gonna commit now and then I'll be back with another video. If you enjoyed this video, my cat and I really appreciate it. If you share it with anyone you think would get something out of it, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, please, turn on notifications. Oh, so annoying asking you to do that. Anyway, uh, have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. All right, thanks.